Welcome to the XFL Simulated on EA Sports, and today we've got a pretty decent matchup coming your way as the Dallas Renegades, who are 0-7, take on the Seattle Dragons 4-3. Obviously, the Renegades have been eliminated from playoff contention, but this is a huge game if you're a Seattle Dragons fan. Sitting at 4-3, LA is 4-3, Houston is 5-2. So th this is a must win, especially considering this, the Dragons' last two games are against Houston and LA. They need to come up with a big win here on the road against Dallas. The Renegades, they have had such a disappointing season. So many games that they were close, just couldn't finish it off at the end. Their offense has really had a hard time finishing out their drives this entire season. No matter if it's Philip Nelson or Landry Jones as their starter, neither quarterback has been able to get it done. Meanwhile, the Dragons... They've had a decent season. They've been inconsistent, though. Um, they, they destroyed L.A. 24-3. And then, last week at home, they got blown out by New York 21-0. Brandon Silvers, uh, he's very hot and cold. They're going to have to hope that he's hot today to try to get Seattle closer to clinching a playoff spot. So the Renegades, even though they're not playing for playoffs here, they want to at least get one win on the season. See if they can do it here against a much stronger Seattle team. Back in week three, Seattle blew them out 31 0. What they can do here? Santiago on the return, and he's got some decent room to run. He'll take it up past the 27, and that's where the Dragons will set up shop. So Brandon Silver's coming out, and again, as we mentioned, he's been very inconsistent. Um, week six, he played a great game against LA. Week seven, he was really bad against New York, only a 43 QB rating. But on the season as a whole, he's had decent stats. He's actually the third best quarterback in the league right now with a QB rating of 106. He's thrown eight touchdowns, one interception. He's thrown for almost 1,300 yards. And his completion percentage, 66.9%. Not bad. But they need a lot from him today. Because Dallas's defense is pretty impressive despite their own 7 record. First and 10 from their own 27. Silver's to throw. He's got a lot of time, and now we'll just dump it off. Incomplete. Ben Johnson does not turn around. Not a good opening start. The Seattle Dragons offensive line, they've been pretty impressive all season long. Kenneth Farrow at the running back position. He's had a lot of holes to run through, and he's been a, a solid back. He hasn't been outstanding, but he's been... He's just been one of those guys that you can rely on when you need him. Receivers, they've got a lot of weapons. Dantes Bird, one of the leaders in the league. Austin Prohl. Keenan Reynolds had a big game last week against New York. Six receptions, 98 yards. Second and 10 now. Kenneth Farrow gets the carry. He's got some room to the outside. Maybe a gain of about two. Thought he was going to get more, but Dallas closes that hole pretty quick. Now we'll look at the Renegades defense. They have some playmakers. Frank Alexander, Winston Craig at the end positions. Tegory Scales, Ray Ray Davison at the linebacker position. They've made a lot of plays. And then Josh Hawkins, he struggled. One of the best cornerbacks coming into the league. He has not been all that solid at the cornerback position, but they still have some weapons there. Deron Smith, one of the best safeties in the league. And Dallas's defense off to a good start. See if they can hold Seattle here on this third and eight. Silvers to throw. He's got a lot of time. Pressure is going to dump it off. Can Farrell get to the sticks? I don't think he did. He did not. Good tackle by Dallas. It's Josh Hawkins getting in there. And Farrell just hesitates a little bit. Hawkins comes in there and makes a nice play. Looks like the Dragons will have a quick three and out here to start the ball game. Good start for the Renegades. And honestly, this is what the Renegades have been able to do. Their defense has done a good job shutting down some pretty good offenses. But it, their own offense has been the issue. They just can never get things going. Brock Miller will punt it away. Flynn Nagel back to receive, but this one's going to go too far. Can Seattle get a bounce? They will. Great punt from Brock Miller. Puts him all the way back at the six. Solid. And that's where the Renegades will take over the football. So now look, Landry Jones, one of the guys coming into this league, he was supposed to be one of the star QBs, and he's been nothing of the sort. Um, the first three weeks, he got the star, and he did not play well. Then Philip Nelson came in for weeks four and five. He played even worse. And then through week six and seven, Jones, he had some decent plays. He made some nice throws, especially in week six against DC. But 
at the end of the game, he just struggles to make the plays that he needs to make. Last week against Tampa Bay, um, down 7-6, they were at the 30-yard line, and Jones takes a 12-yard sack. Cameron Ars Payne gets to Cameron. He's got a lot of room to run on the first play. Cameron Ars Payne, nice gain. First down, brings him out to the 16. Artis Payne has been one of the guys that, uh, throughout most of the season, he's been really poor. But he's had a couple breakout games, and honestly, when the offensive line is playing well, that's when Artis Payne really shines. First and 10 now from the 16. Jones, off play action, gonna go nowhere. Taken down right away. Jordan Martin on the tackle. Came in on the safety blitz and read that one all the way. And they've ran this play a couple times last week against Tampa Bay, and I just don't understand why they like running this RPO with Landry Jones. He is not a runner, and I don't think he ever will be. And after the nice run from Kaminar's pain, now you're stuck at second and 13. Jones gives it to Artis Payne on the draw, and he's got a nice hole and makes a move. Cameron Artis Payne picks up another first down. All the way up to the 30. Another nice run. Renegades running the football well, and this is exactly what happened to Seattle last week. New York, who had a bad rushing game all season long, ran for almost 130 yards against them, and right now Artis Payne having a field day, so... Jim Zorn and this Seattle defense needs to start putting something together here. That's Channing Stribling getting his ankles broken. Artist Payne, what a play. Picks up a clutch first down on second and 13. Here we go. 30 base. First and 10 now from the 30. See if Landry Jones will get his first throw. He's He's checking it they go back to the ground, and this time Artist Payne nowhere to go. Good tackle made by Temple. Pushes him back four yards. So that's the second time in a row that Dallas had a positive run, negative run, positive run, and a negative run. Honestly, just a missed block up front. Jazz Ferguson couldn't contain him. And Nick Temple, solid linebacker, and Seattle defense needs to start stepping up and making more plays like that against the run. They really struggled last week. Struggling so far today. Second and 14. Jones off play action. He's got a lot of time. Now pressured, and he's going to go down. Taken down by Troquez Smith. All the way back at the 17. So, Dragons defense making some plays. Jones could not escape. He had a lot of time to throw the football. Looked like he was finally getting ready to throw it, but Jaquez Smith blindsides him from the back. And now a third and 22 coming up for the Renegades. So, this is what we've seen from their offense. They make a couple positive plays, but they can never get a drive that actually gets to the end zone. Third and 22. Jones to throw. He's going to go deep down the sidelines. And that is almost hauled in. Looking for Jazz Ferguson. It's incomplete. Good defense by the Dragons, and they'll force the Renegades to have to punt the ball away. Jones just taking a shot, and honestly, why not? Third and 22, early in the game. Ferguson had a chance at it, but a good play by Jordan Martin to get in there and just make this a difficult catch for Ferguson. So after what looked like a pretty decent drive, Gallitz is going to have to come on and punt this one away. He'll boot it away. Austin Pearl back to receive. He'll take a fair catch at the 37. So the Dragons offense. Coming back out onto the field. See what they can do here. Brandon Silvers, Kenneth Farrow. They've got a lot of weapons. And again, as we mentioned, those receivers. The Dragons offense can be very dangerous when they're all working together in a fluid motion. See if they can come up here in the second drive. I expect to see Brandon Silver to try to get some short throws and get himself into a rhythm. 
First and ten, great field position to start from the 37. Silks gets it to Kenneth Farrow. He's got pretty much nowhere to go. Good tackle made right away by the Renegades as Tegre sails on the stop. Second and ten coming up now from 37. And if Downs can, can contain Kenneth Farrow to start, it's going to make it all the more difficult for Silvers to get going. To throw. Silvers with a whole lot of time. Going across the middle, that's complete. Keenan Reynolds. Down to Dallas is 48. That's a nice gain of about 15 yards. Keenan Reynolds, again, as we mentioned, heck of a game last week. Six receptions, 98 yards. Makes the first reception of the day there for the wide receivers on the Dragons. And gets him into Dallas territory. Nice catch. Silvers put it a little bit too far out there, but Reynolds extends and makes it makes the catch first and ten coming up from the 48 Kenneth Farrow with the give he's got a nice gain down to the 41 good gain of seven on first down and Seattle offense starting to get rolling here see if they can keep this up and again they need this win this is their easiest game of the last three weeks Going up against LA next week and then Houston to close things out. Silvers to throw. Dallas brings a blitz to the sidelines and that goes absolutely nowhere. Good tackle made by Tristan Dekoud. All over that one. Jumps on the catch but only a gain of maybe a yard. Third and three coming up for the Dragons. They need this conversion to keep. They've had a decent drive going so far. They're still out of field goal range. Silver's a throw. Dallas brings a blitz. Going deep to the sidelines. That's complete. Keenan Reynolds again. All the way down to the 28. And the Dragons move the chains again. Keenan Reynolds. Great reception. That time of 13. And he's just such a solid receiver. Working on Josh Hawkins. Such an efficient receiver. Definitely... Not, not someone that has not gotten enough recognition in the XFL simulated so far. But he's really been breaking out the last couple weeks for Seattle. First and ten from the 28. Silver's to throw. Lots of time down to the sidelines. That's caught. The reception made by Rodriguez for a gain of about two. Second and eight coming up from the Renegades, 26. See the Dragons can finish off this drive with a touchdown. Or if they're the settle for a field goal. Second and eight. Off play action. Silvers, lots of time to throw. He's just got to get rid of it. Pressure, now he's finally going to take off with it. Silvers, can he get to the sticks? He'll be close, gain of about eight, and not enough for the first, third and inches. Silver uh, took way too much time to actually start running. That was dangerous, and we saw him last week hold on to the football way too long against New York. He was sacked five times. He's got to improve that. Third and inches, Kenneth Farrow breaks through the hole, and that's the first down for Seattle. So the Dragons, efficient on third downs on this drive. And again, once this offense gets going, once once Kenneth Farrow can start moving the football, and once Silver's gets a couple completions, this offense can be sneakily dangerous. And sitting at four and three, the Dragons can put themselves in really good position here with a win. They lost to Houston um, back in week five, but then in week six they beat LA. First and ten from the fifteen. In motion is Reynolds. They've got to get the playoff quick. They will. Just in time. Kenneth Farrow. That time he goes nowhere. Good tackle made by the Renegades defense. That's Tenny Adewusi. Loss of one on the play. And Reynolds in motion didn't do anything to fool him.
Renegades have a lot of tough guys on their defense. And again, it's a shame that they that their offense has been unable to finish out these games because the last few weeks they've given their offense many opportunities. Ben Johnson in motion. And that's the end of the first quarter. We are scoreless here in Dallas. The Dragons knocking on the door at the first point of the game. 0-0. Zero, zero. Bob Stoops, um, not a really good debut for him in the XFL. His team is 0-7. And, and coming into the league, they looked like a team that had a lot going for them, and they did. And they just have not found a way to put it together. Dragons, on the other hand, were not expected to be very good, and they've been impressive. Second and 11. Silvers, lots of time. Under pressure, just gets it off, and that's incomplete. Don't know how he got that away, but it's going to set up third and 11. Renegades defender is doing a good job shutting down these wide receivers. Silvers has a lot of time to throw, and he cannot find anyone open. Third and 11. Big third down. Can the Renegades hold him to a field goal? Silvers to throw. Lots of time, and he'll just dump it off to, I believe, that's Ben Johnson. Gain of four. And set up fourth and seven, and a field goal incoming. Deron Smith. Good tackle. Way to contain him. Keep him far away from the sticks. Ben Johnson, he's been a solid tight end for the Dragons. Back in week six against LA, he had a big day. Ernesto Lakeo for the field goal, and it's good. Dallas takes a 3-0 lead. Lakeo knocks through the 29-yarder. First points. And if you're the Dragons, you've got to finish off these drives with touchdowns. Especially next, over the next couple weeks, they've got to look, figure out a way to get in, back into the end zone. They had a great game week six, but weeks weeks four and five they really struggled. Week six they were good. Week seven they struggled. Week eight they haven't been great so far against Dallas. They have a three nothing lead. Ernesto Lakeo kicks it away, and the Renegades. To return, Austin Walters takes it out. Decent return, brings it up to the 26, and that's where the Renegades will set up shop. That was a long Dragons drive. Took up a lot of time, and now Landry Jones coming back onto the field. Only threw one pass the last game. Cameron Ars Payne, a couple nice runs, but the offense just couldn't really get into a groove. And this Renegades offense has a lot of weapons. Ars Payne can be a solid back when the offensive line is working. Jazz Ferguson, Jeff Bidette, Flynn Nagel, Joshua Crockett. They've got a lot of receivers that have been good all year long. And Donald Parham, he's an incredible tight end, leading the league um, at the tight end position over 420 yards. Artis Payne gets the carry, and another big hole for Payne breaks loose. All the way past the 40, another big run for Artis Payne. And the Dragons defense having a hard time shutting down a running game that has not been very solid all season long. Big gain of about 15 on that one. And he is just making defenders miss left and right. One of his most productive days so far. Let's see if Dallas can finally use this to put together a good drive. First and 10 from the 41. Jones gives it back to Artis Payne. This time he's bottled up. Good tackle by the Dragons. Plug in the hole. Second and nine now from their own 42 coming up. It's a matter of time before Landry Jones starts to air it out. And if you're Dallas, you've got to hope that it's sooner than later. Another run to Artis Payne and he goes nowhere again. Only a gain of maybe one, not even anything, barely got to the line. Third and nine, coming up for the 42, and this is this is where Dallas has struggled in the past. 
uh, in the past, not letting Landry Jones throw until third down. And when Jones can't throw until third down, it just puts more pressure on him, and he can't get into a rhythm. See what he can do here, third and nine. Jones to throw, pressured, going across the middle, it's dropped. Artist Payne can't hang on. Probably wouldn't have had a first down anyway, but still. The second time this game, the running game has been working, but they still stall out. Artis Payne, that was right in his hands. The running game is going to have to punt again. And Drew Gallas on to punt it. See if we can angle this one out of bounds or if it'll go too far. We'll take a bounce and that goes to the end zone. A little bit too much leg from Gallitz. Dragons will get it from the 20. First drive for the Dragons wasn't great. Second drive, they had a really nice march going, but just couldn't punch it in. See what they can do to adjust on this drive. Try to find the end zone. Brennan Silver is one of those guys who doesn't have one of the best arms in the league, but he's been efficient. And he's been Seattle's guy. Jim Zorn loves him in Seattle. First and 10 from the 20. Silvers gives it to Kenneth Farrow, who's got a nice hole on first down. Gain of seven. Second and three coming up from the 27. And Kenneth Farrow, again, he's been a solid back um, through seven weeks. Hundreds of clean carries, 484 yards. He's got three touchdowns, so he's been efficient running the football. 4.2 yards per carry. Second and three. Back to Farrow on the ground. Can he get him a first? It'll be close. Looks like he's down just short. Third and one coming up for the Dragons. Big third down. They couldn't pick up the third down on the first drive. See if they can do it here. They were very efficient last drive up until the end. Third and one. Here the Renegades can come up with another defensive stop. They give it back to Farrow who's got a first. Up to the 33, gain of about four, and that's a first down. Farrow hasn't had the best game running the football so far, but he's been pretty good on third downs. Picks up another one there. And again, he just does enough to get the job done, and the offensive line gives him enough room to get by and pick up a first down. First and 10 now from the 33. Silvers gives it back to Kenneth Farrow. Makes a couple moves, brings it up to the 38. So Jim Zorn liking what he sees with the run right now. Second and four coming up from the 38. And Seattle's done a good job of running a lot of the clock down on these drives. Already under five minutes. Second and four. Back to the ground game they go. Kenneth Farrow pushes his way to another first down, up to the 45. So he had a pretty slow start, but he's been running the football well these last few carries. First and 10 from the 45. Let's go, 30 base. See if Silvers will throw it. He will, off play action. Going deep down the middle. That is almost intercepted. Looking for Austin Kroll. Knocked up in the air. Dallas had a shot at it. Looked like Kroll was going to come down with that. Just could not hang on. I like the play call. Kroll was open. It was a nice throw from Silvers. But the Renegades draw it loose on the contact. Second and ten. Back to the ground game. Kenneth Farrow. Close to a first, all the way down to the 46. Third and one coming up for the Dragons. And one, once Kenneth Farrow gets into a groove running the football, it makes it so much easier for Silvers to push the ball downfield. Took a shot there, couldn't connect. See what they do here on third and one. Silvers to throw. Lots of time, he'll go to the sidelines. That's complete. Keenan Reynolds, another big reception for him. Brings up a first down to the Renegades, 42. 
Reynolds has been an impactful player the last couple weeks. Doing it again here. Another third down conversion for him. Nice throw from Silvers. Getting it to the outside, giving Reynolds enough time to make the catch. First and 10 from the 42. Back to the ground game they go. Kenneth Farrow breaks a tackle, takes it down to the 40. And he was averaging under two yards a carry early on in this ball game. Now he's up to four. Second and eight from the 40. And if you're Seattle, you've got to punch it in here, get a touchdown, get a 10-0 lead before halftime. Second and eight. They'll go back to the ground. Flag on the play, most likely going to be holding. holding offense. And that hurts. Ben Johnson on the holding call. And now Still Seattle pushed back. Had a good job going, but now they're second and 18. Back on their own 49. See what Jim Zorn is going to call here to try to get them out of this one. To throw his silvers off play action. He's got time. Now pressured. He has to let go and he won't. He'll go down all the way back at his own 38. A loss of 12. Frank Alexander. And this is what Seattle has struggled with. Literally. Well, well the last couple weeks. Not all season. And we're at the two minute warning. 3-0. Third and 30 coming up. I don't know what Silvers is doing. Holding the football for all that time. Last week, he was sacked five times by the Guardians. Most of those because he held the fo football. Now third and 30. Coming up, Austin Prohl, Dante's Bird, still without receptions in this ball game. And they're just going to run it. Farrow goes correctly nowhere. Now the Renegade's going to have a chance to score. Perhaps, so that, that's tough. The holding call, Silver takes a sack. Now Brock Miller has to punt it away again. He'll boot this one away. Flynn Nagel back to receive. See if Seattle can get another bounce. They won't. So the Renegades can get it from the 20. See if they can finally put together a drive on their end. Offensively, very unproductive. Kamenar's pain having a good day on the ground. But just overall, zero points on the board. And this is what they've struggled with. All season, they, they just cannot find a way to find the end zone, especially early on in the ball game. And they have weapons. Donald Parham, 428 yards receiving. Jeff Bidette, 310. Jones to throw. Pressure, he's going to go to the sidelines, knocked away. Dangerous throw. Andrew Jones still does not have a completion this ball game. Only thrown the ball three times. We're getting close to halftime. That one was especially dangerous. Second and ten coming up from the 20. And if you're Dallas, you're definitely unsure going into year two who your quarterback's going to be. Landry Jones and Philip Nelson both have been very disappointing. Jones to throw. Got a lot of time. Now we'll just dump it off on the sidelines. That's complete. Flynn Nagel. Goes really nowhere. And now Seattle takes a timeout. Third and eight from their own 22. Both offenses is pretty lackluster, especially Dallas. Jones to throw again. Deep towards the sidelines. That's knocked away and incomplete. Jeff Bidette could not hang on. That's a good play by the Dragons defense. Knocking away that football. Jones put the throw where he had to. Channing Stribling just gets in there. Makes a nice play. Fourth and eight, now the Renegades have to punt. Drew Gallett's on to punt it away for the third time today. He'll boot this one away. Austin Pearl back to receive from inside his own 30. Makes a move. Can't really go anywhere after that. Brings it up to the 32. To Seattle, still one timeout. A minute 24. You could definitely score a field goal here. See what they can do offensively to try to get some more points. They, Last week they struggled. This week they have not been great. 
And this offense has got to get clicking. The next two weeks are going to be really difficult, and if their offense can't score, they might just miss the playoffs. And if they happen to be upset by the Renegades here, then they're really in trouble. First and 10 coming up from the 32. Silver's the throw. Deep towards the sidelines. That's complete. Keenan Reynolds again. Down to the Renegades 49. 52 yards receiving for him. That's a gain of 19. He's been so impressive. And he's just he's just wide open. Great play to open up this drive for Seattle. And now they're definitely in striking range. Reynolds got out of bounds. First and 10 from the 49. Silver's the throw. He's got a lot of time. Now he'll just check it down to the outside. That's complete. Ben Johnson gets out of bounds. Gain of maybe two. Jim Zorn has got to continue to push the ball down the field. That was a nice completion to Reynolds. They've got to have more of that. They've got to have a few, they've got to have a few of those in a row. Let's see what we can do here. Second and eight. Silver's the throw. Dallas brings a heavy blitz. Silver to the outside. It's caught, but he's going to be out of bounds. So now a third and eight again for the Dragons. They're out in the field goal range. Can they get a big conversion here? Try to put some more points on the board before half. Dallas' defense has done a pretty good job of containing them, especially when they get into Dallas territory. Third and eight. Silver's the throw. Going to go across the middle, and then it's knocked away, almost intercepted. Way overthrow is Ben Johnson. So Silver's not very accurate with the football today. Fourth and eight. And that's just a tough miss. He has Johnson wide open, and... I, I don't know. Way overthrows him. Deron Smith had a chance at a pick. Fourth and eight, and looks like Brock Miller is going to have to punt it away again for the Dragons. Disappointing. But the Dragons have had a punt so many times. And that's not a very good punt from Brock Miller. Only 26 yards. Dallas gets it on 21. Might as well just keep the touchback so now the renegades have a minute and a timeout so again they have a chance to get some points on the board see what bob soups will do here i mean I, i've been surprised with the lack of fierceness we've seen from dallas's offense especially considering the weapons that they have they just they play too too safe and too comfortable and jones has a hard time attacking downfield. First and 10 from the 21. Jones to throw. Gonna go deep to the sidelines and that's knocked away. Solid coverage. God, we know Beckway. Aguareke. Second and 10 coming up. Very defensive ball game so far. Neither offense has really found a way to score with the exception of Seattle's three points. Second and 10. Jones to throw. Pressured and he'll go down. Taken down by Anthony Johnson. All the way back at the 14. The Dragons with the second sack of the day. These defenses just doing an excellent job of stepping up and making plays. If you're a defensive fan, you are loving what you're seeing from both sides of defense. Johnson breaks right through. Now the Renegades, time taking down, third and 17, probably just going to try to let this go to halftime after this play. They give it to Artis Payne, nowhere for him to go, and Seattle's going to use the timeout to try to get one more play after the punt. 3-0. Both teams. Struggling to get anything going on offense. Gallants punts it away, and I don't know if they're going to have enough time here unless he gets out of bounds. Seattle will have one second from their own 34. Silver's 
Definitely can't reach the end zone from here, but maybe they'll try something tricky or just something to try to get some yards. Disappointing for the Dragons. They're only up 3-0. Renegades will get it for half. Renegades offense has been awful, yet they're still right in this ballgame. First and 10. Silver's to throw. Pressured and he's going to go down. Taken down by Tony Garrard. And that'll take us to halftime. Two big sacks in the final minute. These defensive lines, impressive. Brandon Silvers, really struggling. It's a 3-0 ball game here in Dallas. Renegades offense, see if they can finally get things cooking in the second quarter, in the second half. We will see. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back to the XFL Simulated on EA Sports. Renegades. Still down 3 0. And honestly, with the amount of weapons that they have on offense, you would think that they'd be up by a couple scores at this point, but they're not. This has been the story of their season. 0 oh 7. The Dragons. Dragons defense playing pretty well. But again, Landry Jones just has not been able to push the ball down the field whatsoever. See if the Renegades can change that. See what Bob Stoops told them at halftime will change the way they play. First and ten. I mean, excuse me, sorry. Ernesto <laughs> Lakeo getting ready to send it away. Getting ahead of myself here. I don't know. This game's been a little bit boring. We've got to spice things up. Landry Jones in the offense coming back out. Jazz Ferguson, still not no catches. And Landry Jones, very poor stat, stats at halftime. But they're right in this game. A touchdown puts them up 7-3. The Renegades offense finally do something positive on the scoreboard. First and 10 from their own 25. Jones, who will screen it out to Flynn Nagel, blown up right away. Channing Stribling. He has made a lot of plays for the Dragons defense. The Dragons, they just, their defense is what makes them a threat. They've got a lot of guys there. Channing Stribling, Jordan Martin on the line. Jaquez Smith, Marcel Frazier, linebacker Steven Johnson, Niles Morgan, lots of guys. Johnson, I mean Jones. <laughs> incomplete. He is one for seven. Horrendous day for him so far. Third and ten coming up. And it's just surprising that Landry Jones has been so inefficient. Definitely expected more from the former Pittsburgh Steeler. Third and ten. Jones pressured and he'll dump it off to Kavanaugh's pain. Can he get to the sticks? He won't. Dragons barely able to contain him, fourth and two, and Dallas has a three and out to start this game. Start the second half. I'm making a lot of mistakes up here in the booth. My apologies. Fourth and two, Drew Gallants will punt it away. In my defense, I did not get much sleep last night. <laughs> Gallants punts it away. Austin Pearl back to receive. We met right away at the 22. The Dragons offense will get their first possession of the second half. See if they can do something different here. They've gotten the ball down the field. They've gone into Renegades territory a few times. They only have three points. Keenan Reynolds having a good day, but it hasn't been enough to get him in the end zone. And ultimately, Brandon Silver's got to step up, start making some better throws. And again, surprising. Dante's Bird, Austin Pearl, still without receptions. They're such staple pieces of this offense, and neither of them has a catch. First and ten from the 22. Kenneth Farrell has run the football well in the second quarter. See what they do here. Throwing up the third. Silver's a throw. Pressure. That is knocked away. Looking for Kenneth Farrell. <laughs> Offensive lineman gets in the way. Messy football on both sides. 
And yes, both defenses are playing well, but it's because these offenses have just been so awful. Second and 10 now from the 22. Silvers, off play action. He's going to go deep down the middle. And that is knocked away. Almost intercepted. Great play by the Renegades defense. And I, I don't know. Silvers throwing it into like triple coverage there. Not a good throw. Third and ten. Can we finally get some offense in this ball game? Neither team playing like they want to win. At least neither offense is. Silvers to throw. He's got a lot of time. He's just going to check it down. That's dropped. Good hit. By the Renegades. It's so surprising to see the Dragons unable to put the ball down the field because in week 3 they beat them 31-0 at home. And their defense is doing the exact same thing that they did against Dallas in week 3. The offense just looks so much... There's so much less enthusiasm... They just look so much more lackluster. Only three points. They're going to have to punt again. Brock Miller on to punt it. He'll boot it away. Flynn Nagel back to receive inside his own 15. He'll be met right away and taken down at the 21. Good open field tackle by the Dragons. So out comes the running gate offense again. Both sides with quick three and outs. And right now, the Dragons, if they don't put together something positive, they're going to have a really hard time if they make the playoffs, or, or even if they make the playoffs at all. I mean, if they play like this against Los Angeles or Houston, they're going to get blown out. First and 10 from their own 21. Camera is paying on the give, and he's got some room to the outside. Nice gain of four. Second set, set up second and six. Artis Payne having a good day, but it's a shame that Jones has not been able to use that to push the ball downfield. I mean, Jeff Bidette, Jazz Ferguson, Flynn Nagel, and Joshua Crockett. I mean, they have lots of receivers. Donald Parham still without a catch. Artis Payne will get to the sticks and be close. He's got enough. First down. Nice run. Dallas finally gets another first down. It's been a long time since they've gotten a first down this ball game. And unreal, the fact that with the way this offense has been playing, the fact that they can score a touchdown and be up 7-3 is mind-blowing. First and 10 from the 31. Back to the ground game they go. Artis Payne goes backwards. Good open field tackle by Steven Johnson. Pushes it back three yards. Artis Payne goes backwards. Juke the wrong way. Second and 13. Coming up, but a nice play by Johnson. He's been an excellent linebacker as well. Very versatile player. And your announcer is feeling tired, that's for sure. Especially when there's not much offensive excitement. I mean, 3-0. Under 7 minutes to play in the third quarter. Gotta see some offense somewhere along the way. Artis Payne on the pitch. And that's Steven Johnson again. Deja Vu pushes him back two more yards. Now third and 15 coming up for the Renegades. Un unbelievable that neither offense has been able to crack the code yet. And again, I, I don't like the fact that Dallas is not passing the football because Cameron Payne will have a couple good runs and they just keep running the football and Seattle can just read it. Let Landry Jones throw on first and second down. Back in week six against DC, they ran the football on first and second down throughout pretty much the first half. They played terrible. When they finally let Jones start throwing the ball on first and second down, they marched down and scored two touchdowns right away. That's what they have to do. And now backed up third and fifteen. I don't I don't see Lance Jones making this throw. Third and fifteen. He's got a lot of time. He's gonna go deep. Wide open, that's complete. Donald Parham all the way down to the twenty-six. That's his first catch of the day, and it goes for 47 yards. Wow. Parham was wide open. Landry Jones puts down the money, but honestly, I mean, you really can't miss when Parham is that wide open. The big tight end, 6'8". And he's got speed. 
just couldn't break that tackle there at the end. He could have had a touchdown, but Dallas finally gets into Seattle territory for the first time all day. First and 10 from the 26. What a play. Jones to throw. Throwing on first down. That's complete. Parham again. Gain of about three. And now you get the sense that the Renegades offense is finally clicking. I mean, when you start letting Jones throw the football, it helps. Second and seven. See if the Renegades can get a touchdown and take the lead. Jones, back to throw. Seattle brings a blitz. You can dump it off. That's complete. Nowhere to go for Artis Payne. Third and five coming up. Big third and five. The Renegades do not want to settle for three here. They have not scored a touchdown really at all the last few weeks. Third and five. They've got to find a way. Last week against Tampa Bay, they only kicked field goals. Obviously, that did not pay off. They've got to score touchdowns. Third and five. Jones to throw. He's got a lot of time. He's going to go deep towards the end zone. Almost intercepted. Knocked away by the Dragons. And the Renegades will, in fact, have to settle for three. And Jones just tries to force it in there. Man, that was so close to being a pick. Guy went a Bueke. Iguabeke. <laughs> Looks like him and Stribling just kind of run into each other there. Both of them would have had a chance at a pick. Surprising. It's 3 nothing, and there are no turnovers in this game. It's really just been the fact that both offenses have stunk. Fourth and five. And Austin McGinnis on to kick the field goal tie things up. 38-yard attempt. The kick's up. And it's good. Dallas finally scores their first points of the game. With about four minutes to play in the third quarter. It's tied up at 33. McGinnis, he's been a good kicker. Solid player for the Renegades. But again, it'll be interesting to see what Dallas decides to do in the offseason. I mean, I could see Bob Stoops getting fired with how bad it's been. But at the same time, I mean, part of this is his fault. Part of this is the quarterback's fault. I'd expect to see them bring in a brand, brand new guy in season two. Austin McGinnis. He'll kick it away. Santiago to receive, and he'll be taken down at the 25. So the Dragon set up shot. The Dragon's only drive this half was a quick three and out. Kenneth Farrow having a decent day on the ground, but Brandon Silvers has just struggled to get things going. It's got to do a better job. 3-3. Three, three. The Renegades finally score points against the Dragons. They only have three points in almost seven quarters playing against this Dragons defense. That's impressive. First and ten now from the 25. Can Jim Zorn get his offense going? Silvers gives it to Kenneth Farrow. He's got a big hole. Farrow with the first down up to the 36. Nice gain of 11. First and 10 coming up with the 36. And that is what helps the Dragons a lot. Kenneth Farrell just bursting through those holes and picking up first downs. Great play to start the drive. First and 10 now from their own 36. So we'll see what they'll do here. Silvers gives it back to Farrow. He's got another hole, makes a move, and Farrow close to another first down, and he does. First down. Two nice runs from Farrow. He's, he's agile, he's quick, and he's speedy. He just bursts through those holes and makes men miss. Nice move on Adewusi. First and ten coming up from the 46. Go now. 70, 80. I'm here, I'm coming. I'm here, I'm coming. Silver's to throw. Across the middle, misses his man. 
Not a good throw. 9 for 18, only completing 50% of his passes. Silvers, he has struggled to throw the ball accurately the last couple weeks. And, and this is the biggest problem for him, is he's going to... Last week was against New York, this week against Dallas. Two of the worst teams in the league, and he can't get his offense going. Second and ten. Dallas brings a blitz to the outside. Way overthrows, looking for Dondas Bird. Man. He is just struggling big time. If he keeps playing like this, the Dragons are really going to struggle just trying to make it to the playoffs. Again, they're playing LA and then Houston. It's going to be rough. Third and ten from their own 46. Still worth the throw. Pressured, and he's going to go down again. The second sack for Tony Gerard. Wow. Silvers hangs on to it too long. Gerard gets in there. This is a great play. Not giving up, and the receiver is just struggling to get open. This running renegades defense is shutting them down. They're gonna have to punt again, and it's a real shame because again, Kenneth Farrell ran the football great on those two runs for nothing. Fourth and seventeen. Rock Miller boots it away. What a kick! He goes too far. Put way too much leg on that one, and Dallas will get it at the twenty. Will we even get a touchdown this game? Who knows? I mean, these offenses have been really bad. Jones at least finally had a nice throw to Donald Parham, who was wide open. But he, then, he, then they still couldn't pick up a first down. See if they can change that on this drive. Seattle defense is really only going to be able to hold up for so long. Dallas has been shooting themselves in the foot. Let's see what they can do here. First and ten. They're going to screen it out to Jeff Bidette, who goes backwards. That's Bidette's first catch of the day. It goes absolutely nowhere. And yes, that's technically a throw on first down, but those screens rarely work. Especially when there's no blockers. I mean, I don't know. I'd rather see Jones just get a nice completion across the middle. Five, six yards. Something to get into a rhythm. Second and ten. To the run game they go. Artis Payne bottled up as Nick Temple again with a nice tackle. Third and nine. So the Renegades struggling as well to get anything going. Third and nine. Surprising that after eight weeks, these offenses are still struggling. Jones to throw. He's going to go deep across the middle. That's caught. Donald Parham again. This guy is absolutely incredible. Dallas is lucky that they found him and lucky that they kept him, especially considering the fact that they're 0-7. But what a big, he is wide open down the team again. Seattle just can't cover him. Another big third down completion for him. Reception. All the way to the 47. First and 10. See the running games can finally get some positive. Get something positive on the first down. Artist Payne. Nice hole. Brings it down to Seattle's 47. He's got over 50 yards on the day. Second and four coming up. As we near the end of the third quarter. Still a 3-3 ball game. See if they have enough time to get this play off, or if they'll just let it tick down. And they will just let it go to the fourth quarter. It is a 3-3 ball game here in Dallas. Both offenses playing very sloppy football, and both defenses playing impressive football. Renegades, I mean, they're already out of the playoffs, but to get a win here at home would really just be something to, to boost their ego, boost their motivation, and help them look forward to next year. Meanwhile, Seattle, I mean, if they drop to 4-4, four and four, they're in trouble. I mean, this is their last easy, at least supposed to be easy game of the season. They've only got, a th it's tied up at 3-3. Artist Payne again. 
cannot find the hole, he'll go back a yard or two. Third and six. Big third down. Can the Renegades pick up another one? We'll see. Good tackle by Seattle getting in there, plugging up that hole. Marcel Frazier in there on the stop. Third and six. See what Bob Stoops calls here. I expect to see them go back to Parham. He's been so efficient on these third downs. Third and six. Jones. He's got a lot of time. Now pressured. He's going to go down. Marcel Frazier. And it's unbelievable the fact that Jones and Silvers both have just been taking these big sacks on big plays. Frazier just gets in there, and, and Jones, he has time to throw it. He's just got to get rid of it. Frazier, great penetration. Jones, absolutely nowhere to go, and the Renegades, after what looked like a decent drive, they're going to have to punt it away. We might just go to overtime at 3-3. <laughs> Fourth and 18. Drew Gallitz. Pumped it away again for the Renegades. Pro back to receive. Will it go too far? It will. So the Dragons will get it from their own 28 and a half minutes to play. This is the time for Seattle to put something together. They need it desperately. Keenan Reynolds has had a good day, but he's really been the only bright spot of their offense when it comes to throwing the football. Ken Farrell has been decent on the ground. He got over 70 yards. But Silvers, completing under 50% of his passes today. Not efficient in the slightest. And part of this is on Jim Zorn. He's got to call plays that he knows will work. First and 10 from the 20. Silvers to throw. Lots of time. Going to the sidelines. That is knocked away. Austin Pearl can't hang on. This Renegades defense is just shutting down Brandon Silvers. And yes, yeah, Silvers is not the best quarterback, but he's been good this season. I mean, he ripped apart the Wildcats defense back in week six, and the Wildcats have arguably the best defense in the league. Second and 10. Kenneth Farrow trying to bounce it to the outside. Not really anywhere for him to go. Good tackle made by Dallas. That's Calvin on the stop. Third and ten. It's just constant. It's been the trend that we've seen from both offenses. Just nothing on first and second down all day, and they're stuck in these long third downs. Third and ten. Silver's back to throw. Gonna check it down. It's complete. Ken Farrow, but it's not enough for a first. Fourth and four, and the Dragons will have to punt again. It's really unbelievable how bad Seattle has been playing. Last week, they couldn't score against New York, and this week, they, they're they practically handing Dallas the first win of the season if the Renegades can actually put something together. Brock Miller pumps it away. Flynn Nagel back to receive at about the 15. We met right at about the 19, and that's where Renegades will set up shot. Artist Payne struggled the last few drives, and it's to be expected because Landry Jones has been really unable to throw the football. So of course Seattle's going to prepare themselves for the run. First and ten from their own 19. Ken Larry Jones marched his team down the field. Seven minutes to play. The give. Spinning away. Cameron R's pain. Ends up picking five. Second and six coming up. game might just end up being 6-3 in overtime. Second and six from the 24. 
back to the ground they go. Artist Payne, nowhere to go. Marcel Fraser, again, making plays. Third and six. And again, the Renegades, you have a nice run. Why not go to the pass there? Why not let Jones try to at least find somebody open? Fraser, great penetration. This Dragon's defense, doing an excellent job. Third and six. Can the Renegades finally... I mean, they've made a couple of big plays. Can they capitalize on something? Jones. That is intercepted. Picked off by Seattle. Mohamed Cisse with his second pick of the season. And the Dragons defense comes up with a huge play when they need it. And that might set up Seattle with a potential possible winning drive. Jones not had a good day. And he just misses the throw. Joshua Crockett. Looking from across the middle and Cisse all over it. Big time interception. First tone turnover of the game, which again is so surprising considering it's a 3-3 ball game. Silvers has the ball on down to 36. If they somehow fail to score on this drive, I don't know what to think about this offense because... This, this is their last chance. Well, not uh, their official last chance, but I mean, this is their... This is the best chance that they'll probably have all game. And they're going to screen it out. And it's complete. Dante's Bird gets his first catch of the day. Down to the 32. Bird was so productive the first few weeks, and he has not seen the same level of production in the last couple weeks. And really, it's just because Silver has not been very efficient. And week five against Houston, they were blown out with BJ Daniels back there. Second and six now from the 32. Kenneth Farrow, nowhere to go. Great tackle. Renegades defense doing a great job. Calvin in there on the stop. Third and six. Can Seattle pick up a first down and try to get a touchdown? Under four and a half minutes to play, and we still are at 3-3. Silver's to throw. Lots of time. Now pressure, he's going to go down. Unreal. That's Lolisle on the tackle. Dallas with a sack, pushes him back to the 40, and now Seattle might be out of field range again. Brandon Silver's has been absolutely awful the last couple weeks, holding on to the football. Unbelievable. I, I don't know. That frustrates me. Watching this game and seeing Silver say, this is, what did I just say? The one thing he couldn't do was not score, and now, will Lakeo have a chance to knock through a 57 yarder? He won't. Unreal. And he kicked a 58 yarder a few weeks ago. Wow. What a shame. Miller has to punt it away. What is, what is Seattle doing? And they somehow get Mohamed Cisse pushes him down to the one. How the heck? Seattle stopped running the football, and somehow, Cissé gets in there. So we have the pick, now a big play. Landry Jones, 7 for 15, 88 yards, and a pick. Now, the type of stats you want to see from your go-to guy. And now back up with their own one, can he somehow march them all the way down the field with three and a half minutes to play? I cannot believe the Dragons did not score on that drive. First and ten from the one. And they give it to Artist Payne on the ground. Nowhere for him to go. Second and ten coming up. We might go to overtime. I was being sarcastic when I said that, but... Right now, I mean, it's 3-3 with three minutes to play. Second and ten from the one. Back to the ground the game they go. Artist Payne bouncing off tackles. Takes it up to the eight. To the Renegades. Third and three coming up. Third and 
see if the Renegades can pick this up. I mean, they have a long way to go with not much time. But if, again, just if, if they can get in field goal range, they can win it. Third and three. Close to the two-minute warning already. Back to the ground game they go, and that's a first down for Kavanaugh's paint. Brings it down to the 17. Dallas picks up a big first down on the ground. I'm surprised they're running the football, considering they don't have much time, but it's working. And one of these teams has got to make a play pretty quickly for us to not go to halftime. I mean, overtime. First and ten, that's a two-minute warning. Three, three, ball game. No touchdowns. It's been a slugfest here in Dallas. See if Bob Seuss can put together a two-minute drive with this team that hasn't been able to march down whatsoever this entire game, practically. First and ten. Jones to throw. Pressured. Unreal. He goes down again. That's Anthony Johnson with his second sack. Jones and Silvers. Every time. It's like every play. They hold on to the football and throw a terrible pass or get sacked. Anthony Johnson breaking through again. The Seattle defense. Seriously doing some unbelievable things. And that's a loss of 11. Neither offense wants to win this game. Second and 21 from the 6. Jones to throw. Pressured. Barely gets out of the end zone. Anthony Johnson again. Two sacks in a row and brings him down to the 1. <laughs> this is insane. Third and 26. Jones is just, again, holds to the, onto the football. And this line couldn't hold up. Third and 26. Back at their own one once again. Why are they screening the football? That's a safety! What in the world? Godwin... If what? <laughs> I cannot pronounce that name. But Jazz Ferguson taking down the end zone. Godwin Egwebeke. <laughs> I'm laughing because... I can't quite figure out what Bob Seuss was thinking. Seattle's gonna win this game on a safety. What in the world? 5-3. This looks like a baseball score. And now Gallant has to punt it. And Seattle can basically just run out the clock now. That is one of the wildest endings I have ever seen to a ball game. Brandon Silver is coming back out. 57 seconds. Dallas still has two timeouts, but I mean, it's practically game over. I've never seen a team win on a safety quite like that. And what in the world is Bob Stoops thinking calling a screen from your own one yard line? With no blockers. I, I do not understand. Phew. What a weird game. First and ten. Sal's gonna come away with a win to go five and three. Winning the game 5-3. Dallas calls a timeout. Wild and very weird. Second and six. Back to the ground. Kenneth Farrow cannot get to the sticks. Third and two. Not over till it's over. And now Silver's in a kneeling position. Take a knee, but they're gonna have to punt it. They'll let the clock run almost all the way down. Dallas may have one more play. It depends. 
how much time they have after the punt. Miller punts it away. Flynn Nagel back to receive. And he'll be taken down at the 15. So, yeah, I really don't think Austin McGinnis is going to get into field goal range here. Six seconds. Dallas has one play from their own 15. This is one of the weirdest games really ever. 5-3. <laughs> and I highly doubt Landry Jones is going to get a Hail Mary here. He can't even throw the ball 10 yards. Jones to throw. He's just going to air it out deep. And knocked away. Incomplete. That's the ball game. Wild. Seattle. Comes up with a 5-3 win on the road to improve to 5-3. Um, I don't know what to say about this win. They played awful. I mean, their defense played great. Anthony Johnson, three sacks and three tackles. He played incredible. Um, but as a whole, their offense looked awful. But the Renegades, 5-3. That's an awful loss. <laughs> Losing on a safety. I don't know what to say. Dallas drops to 0-8. Seattle, 5-3. That's a big win for them. They'll maintain their second spot in the division. 5-3. That's the final score here from Dallas. Thanks for tuning in to the XFL Simulated. What a weird game here in Week 8. Make sure to go give us a follow on Twitter so you get recaps, updates, just a lot of stuff there on Twitter. And check out the XFL sheets in the description below. Lots of good information there. Season stats, game stats, individual player stats, um, the standings, power rankings, and so much more. Hope to see you there. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next game. LA hosting Houston. That's going to be a good one. See you next time.